landed a beautiful punch here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what $70 got you. When you look at the trailers for UFC 5 and compare them to the GTA trailer, you'll notice a difference in how these companies want to showcase the improvements they've made to their products. And I know it's not fair to compare the Grand Theft Auto series to the UFC series, but to be honest, I don't care. EA does not deserve fairness. At least the open world Florida Man trailer is interesting. They're flexing the graphics, the environment, the jiggle physics. After watching the whole thing, you're probably banging your credit card on the table screaming take my money. Which is fine, the only problem is that you're probably going to be doing that for a year and some change. <laughs> Of course I do have my suspicions. Remember when Rockstar said that they weren't going to add any story DLC for Red Dead 2 because they wanted to focus more on the online mode? Yeah, so how many of y'all are still playing that? There's also the whole GTA Definitive Edition controversy, but I don't mind what happened there. I can give props to a proper finesse, because that's what it was. It's not like the OG games weren't readily accessible. Kind of. They knew enough people were gonna ask how high when Rockstar said jump. Shit, all they had to do was fix a couple of bugs and slap on a texture that was supposed to look good. What? Come on. Don't, don't you want to play this? But overall, I'm sure GTA 6 will be well received. I highly doubt that they will fumble the bag on that one. Was I supposed to be talking about something else? Oh yeah, uh, UFC 5. So remember what I said at the end of my UFC 4 video? You know what? I'm gonna take a step back into double coverage, go for a shot. A little risk, try to tell the future. EA Sports UFC 5 is going to be ass. Stop trusting EA. Well, guess what? UFC 5 is five gallons of booty powder. And instead of giving up on the series, a lot of y'all fell for the trailers and threw down money for uh, this. That will be $70, please. And before you say, well, you bought it too, so you're also a dumbass. First of all, I'm only a part-time dumbass. Second of all, I'm making my money back. I'm making my money back. As for you guys, I hope you learned a valuable lesson this time around, or not. I mean, how many times do you have to go through this before you smarten up? Before we take a look at the game, I want to direct your attention to the cover art. Usually in sports games, they take a picture of the athlete, slap that bitch on a cover, and bada bing bada boom. But this time, UFC 5 took a different approach. As you can see, they used the in-game models instead. Over here we have, um, Valentina Shevchenko? I don't know, I give that a 6 out of 10. And over there we have Volkanovski's cousin. Okay, I'm completely lost here. You know what? I never thought I'd see the day when the officially licensed UFC game looks like a bootleg MMA game that you would find on Steam, but here we are. Honestly, even if they use real photos, it wouldn't matter because both the title and the background are way too bland. At least in the past UFC covers, you can see the stadium and it compliments the athletes. Except for UFC 4, of course. And for the record, although it pains me to compliment this game, UFC 4's cover blows UFC 5's cover out of the water. It's not even close. They made a great stylistic choice here. It's a shame that the game sucks though. And maybe they knew UFC 5 was going to be ass and they wanted to reflect that through the cover. And on that note, let's get into it, starting with the career mode. UFC 5's career mode starts with you creating your character, and if you're familiar with UFC 4, you'll immediately notice a red flag. The character creation here is virtually identical to the predecessor. Now I'm quite confused by this information considering that this is a different engine and a newer console generation, and yet I'm getting a sense of deja vu. It really makes you think how much actually has it changed. Now don't worry, we're gonna find that out in a few minutes. But first, I have to finish my fighter. Her name is Jaylene Hooker. There's a joke in there somewhere, but I'm not gonna find it. The story begins with a fighter pulling up to EA's version of Street Beast, where she faces off against a soccer mom. It goes as expected, and after winning the fight, we see the return of the man, the myth, the legend, Coach Davis. Oh man, I, I loved him in UFC 4, how he was there 
Okay, he's just a ball nigga, man. He's basically a coach on LeBron's team post Miami Heat. He scolds the fighter for doing backyard shenanigans, but then informs her that she can start doing legit fights. And after blasting through a handful of creative fighters, we're invited to Dana White's contender series. Not only that, but we're also allowed to train at the UFC Performance Institute. Sure, nothing changes training wise, but at least we get to meet a woman that we're told is Valentina Shevchenko. But I'm not sure. Her face is throwing me off. She's also the same height as my fighter, which can't be right. She's She's like five foot five and she's like, okay, wait a minute. Okay, something is off here. Give me a moment, I need to conduct an experiment. Alrighty, so no matter how tall you make your fighter, he or she will still be the same height as Shevchenko and Coach Davis. Come on EA, it's the little things. Anyways, I won the match by KO, but because I didn't do it in the first round, Uncle Dana decided not to sign me. WFA, here I come. I eventually made it to the USC where I won the Bantamweight Championship and became the greatest of all time with 32 wins and zero losses. You might be thinking that I'm leaving out a bunch of crucial information, but that's really it. I know, pretty underwhelming. All the stuff I do want to talk about is in my list of issues with career mode. So here's my list of issues with career mode. Starting with the story, well, what story? What we got was the same shit from UFC 4, but with minor changes. Instead of starting out losing to some chick we never see again, we beat the bricks out of some woman in some dude's backyard. Sprinkle into cutscenes of Valentina and there you go. EA had one more chance to show what the hell Coach Davis is even doing here, but there he is again, just being there. To be fair, he does give you some advice, like you need to focus, eyes on a prize, diversify your attacks, really riveting stuff here. Speaking of the same shit, for those who aren't familiar, before your bout, you have to set up your training camp. A training camp that has barely changed since the last game. That means that the system was so great that there was no need to improve it, right? No. You spend most of your time in sparring, where the training options are boxing, Muay Thai, wrestling, BJJ, and the heavy bag. Just like in UFC 4, the only change that EA made here is the option to simulate your sessions. At first glance, you might say that this is a positive, but think about it. Instead of improving their training camp, they said here's the same shit, but at least you could skip some of it now. They didn't even attempt to try to break the monotony. In fact, they even got rid of the mat stage for wrestling and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, probably because it kept glitching out, which means all you're gonna see is is a Davis Octagon in a heavy backstage. No amount of simulating is going to distract you from how boring this is. It's also very dumb on many occasions. For example, some of the challenges in sparring require you to throw dangerous moves over and over again. You know, like throw X amount of elbows to your partner's face over and over again until the gash on your head is shaped like a Nike swoosh. Now I know this is a video game and these aren't real people, but this still looks stupid. Fighters usually practice their elbows and knees for that matter on bags or with a partner holding up a pad. EA could have added something like that here, but their attention to detail has been set on a Julius Randle setting. Like yeah, we'll have John Jones be referred to as a look see do fighter, something that I'm willing to bet a lot of fans don't really know the origin of, let alone the fact that Bruce Buffer even calls him that. But we won't have training pads though, blow me a river. And we can throw invite a fighter in there too since I have the same problem with it. Learning a head kick by using it on your opponent at 100% speed is dumb and lazy. It shows that EA didn't bother to think of a better way to learn new moves. So imagine the average training camp. You do some film watching, you hype the fight a couple times, you learn a move here and there, and you spar, spar, spar your life away. The camp ends and it's fight night. Multiply that by 32 times and you got yourself a hell of a career. So appealing. Eventually. I almost don't want to run my skateboard into my shins over and over again. Juxtapose that to the UFC Embedded series where we see how fighters prepare for their bouts and you notice how behind EA is. Because in the videos you see the competitors hitting pads, shadow boxing, using various machines to work on their endurance, etc etc. The training environment also changes, from the hometown gym to the performance institute slash an away gym that's kind enough to host a fighter. Even a hotel room is an option. And outside of training, we see these guys doing interviews and press conferences. Is. They would hurl slurs and dollies at their opponents, all to build up hype for the fights. Now, am I saying I want all of that in my UFC game? No. Well, yes. I would love the idea to play a game mode where I could promote the fight by making fun of my opponent's nationality and then train like Tony Ferguson, and after partying like John Jones, I pulp the guy. That alone would be worth the $70. But instead, we get the dreaded cycle. Train and fight, train and fight, train and fight. For clarification, all games have a cycle. Get to the cap 
castle, kill the fake Bowser, keep going until you kill the real one and save the princess. Super Mario. Explore the area, loot the area, and clear the area. Fallout Wars. Or play a shitty mission, hang out with the diversity gang, and repeat until you destroy an entire video game studio. Saints Row shitty reboot. The cycle success is incumbent on the variety that the players are given. At least Super Mario switches it up with different enemies, platform difficulty, and underwater level. At least Fallout 4 tells an interesting story with the location to explore. And at least Saints Row 2022 made you want to turn the game off and play Saints Row 2 instead. Over here in UFC 5, however, what's their added piece of variety? Uh, sometimes your opponent will pull out of the fight and you can choose if you want to square up with the replacement. Besides that, we don't really have that much to work with here. I guess there was that one time where we trained at the Performance Institute, but it was really just a change in the background, nothing else. We don't even go back to the PI after the first time, and I'm gonna put my UFC nerd glasses back on because the Performance Institute is commonly used by fighters to train if the event is being held at Las Vegas. Fuck the Golden Knights. But you only see it once in the career mode. You'll be training at the Davis Gym until the the concussions in your head form a union and lobby to have you I mean, until your longevity runs out. Cool, so I talked enough about the training camp, but what about the main part of the career mode, the fights? Well, where do I begin? Let's start with the opponent options, or lack thereof. See, once I became a ranked fighter, my career was inundated with rematches. I fought some created Asian chick three times, I also fought Jermaine the Randomine three times, and I had a quadrilogy with Amanda Nunes, and I beat all of them without losing. That's not how matchmaking works. It took Max Holloway a W against Yair, an absolute ass whooping on Calvin Cater, and a controversial decision before all of that to get a rematch against Volk. In UFC 5, however, I knocked the ovaries out of Amanda Nunes in a second bout, had her staring at God, but for whatever reason, the matchmakers think she's worthy of two more chances. It's rematches on rematches, all while these fighters are hitting their late 30s and 40s even. Although this is the women's bantamweight division, so I can kinda see why there's not a wide range of fighters. Doesn't really explain why I only fought five of them throughout my career. They did add creative fighters to the mix, which was a good idea, but as you can see, they didn't add enough. Wait, hold on. There's more than enough women on the UFC roster that were left out. Where's Macy Chassian? No Bueno Silva? No Dump Trunk Dumont? She is driving a dump truck, my goodness. <laughs> what happened? I thought this was a newer generation. PS4 to PS5. I thought Xbox Series X did what Xbox One don't. You can definitely toss more chicks in here. Wait, you didn't add any new fighters in this game day one besides the pre-order bonuses? Okay, I'm not surprised. I do have have one more major issue that I want to bring up that was prevalent in my career mode. One mechanic that EA was parading around was the addition of doctor stoppages. If a fighter gets hit in the head enough times, they'll get a cut. If enough damage is done to the head after getting cut, the doctor will come in and check the damage. And if it looks real bad, the doctor will stop the match. After playing through the career mode, I can tell you with confidence that the system shows how these dudes at EA have no idea what they're doing. Allow me to put on my UFC nerd glasses again and explain. Fighters often leave their bouts with a boo-boo on their face, with that boo-boo being either a cut or swelling, sometimes both. Swelling is more prevalent since most strikes and fights are done with the hands, which are gloved. Cuts do happen though, from basically jabs and hooks too, but most of the real bad ones are caused from the unprotected hard parts of the body. You know, the elbows, the knees, the dome. If you've ever watched a prime Tony Ferguson match, then you know what I'm talking about. But if you were basing it off of UFC 5, you would have thought that every fight in real life was taking place in a vampire dance club. My opponents would often sit on a stool after the first round with the gnarliest gash on their forehead or brow. And as the fight goes on, the cut gets worse and worse until the doctor comes in and stops the fight. Throughout my career, the overwhelming majority of my fights ended via doctor stoppage. We're talking at least 20 times involving the same guy every time coming in and cutting my fight short. Right now, but she is still determined to get a victim right now. But she is still determined to get a victim. She's really struggling. You gotta wave it off, right? Somebody's daughter out there. You gotta wave it off, right? Somebody's daughter out there, yeah. You gotta wave it off, right? Somebody's daughter out there, right? Somebody's daughter, right? Somebody's daughter, right? Somebody's daughter. That is overkill, and it's not like I throw elbows and knees left and right, I primarily throw jabs and hooks, but you wouldn't know that if you were just looking at my opponent's faces after 4 minutes of fight time. Now in real life, of course TKO doctor stoppages happen in the UFC, but let's look at the numbers. As of now, current year, current day, the last UFC doctor stoppage was on February 18th, 2023. UFC Vegas 69, shut up. Nazim, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that, defeated Evan Elder after the ringside position 
Christian saw the gash and stopped the fight. If you want to go further than that, there was that time when Brandon Moreno beat Davidson Figueredo at UFC 283. And if you want to go even further than that, Corey Sanhagen sliced up Song Yudong at UFC Vegas 60. Do you notice a pattern here? These instances are spread out like some ass cheeks. In other words, doctor stoppages have no business being so common in UFC 5. While I understand that EA wants to flex their new mechanic, they should have focused on making sure it's polished first. The majority of my fights shouldn't end prematurely just because my opponent's face is built like Ric Flair's. Hey y'all, post script writing Jason here, and I've got an addendum, kind of. Turns out that you can change the cut resistance in the career mode, and you can even turn off doctor stoppages altogether. Originally, I thought that this would invalidate my point here, but then I thought about it for five seconds. First of all, doctor stoppages are still happening way too often at the default setting. And second of all, you can't change any of the game style settings on legendary mode. Awesome. Okay, that's all, as you were. All right, we need to move on from the career mode. To summarize, it somehow pales in comparison to a game that is more than a decade old. Shit, even UFC 3 is miles ahead, especially with the training camp. But what about the online mode? Look, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not gonna touch the online mode. I have no interest in playing against a human in a terrible sports game. I know it's unprofessional, but I'd rather preserve my sanity. As far as the other game modes go, there's the usual suspects, Fight Now and Event Creator. The Kumite in the backyard make their return, but there's still no pride mode, even though there's a pride promotion. There's also a new section called Fight Contracts, where you can complete fights for V-Bucks. The challenges range in difficulty, rounds, and game style. Kind of bare bones, but at least you can test drive new fighters and gambling so that's cool i guess besides that we didn't get anything really new in the offline department i i want to remind you that this game was originally 70 dollars 70 dollars for a game that has a terrible career mode that barely changed from the last installment only one new offline game mode that's primarily just a randomizer a roster where besides muhammad ali the majority of the new fighters are either returning guest characters or alter egos and some of them are locked behind a paywall a revamped submission system that's supposed to trick you into thinking that EA has changed a lot, a cut system that can ruin fights, and an overall gameplay that has some cool animations, I'll admit, but it's still weightless at times, clunky, and underwhelming. Oh wait, at least it looks prettier. Sometimes. Who is this man and what have you done to Aljamain Sterling? You know what? Here's some more miscellaneous issues with the game, just because I'm feeling generous. Apparently before UFC 5 dropped, the referees had a fight to the death and Herb Dean was a sole survivor. There's no stripping to fight kit animation, they just cut away and cut back. They don't even show the Vaseline application and cup check anymore, even though it was there in the past games. The security guards here look like they want to bang as soon as they get some privacy. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Bruce Buffer's fighter introductions are cut short including the championship bouts, meaning there's no referee explaining the rules and no touch gloves if you want. Fighters will protest a stoppage due to a leg kick TKO. All the coaches are generic, no Trevor Whitman, no Eugene, no Ray Longo. Cash in a career mode has little use. Sparring partners consist of identical quadruplets. Going back to the coaches for a moment, they go from nowhere to be found when Bruce Buffer announces the decision to instant transmissioning into the octagon after the hand is raised. And finally, it doesn't matter how badly I knock out my opponent, they'll be standing next to the referee after the replay. That's what you can get for $70. And I'm fully aware that this game goes on sale every time a fighter takes performance enhancing drugs, but that doesn't matter. Even if I had paid $30 for this, I'd still be pissed off, in theory. I'm not even disappointed anymore. I expected this. But if you didn't, my brother in Christ, you need to pay attention more. You might think that this is the part where I give suggestions on how to improve this franchise, but I already did that in my UFC 4 video. Actually, EA can go ahead and make the same mistakes over and over over again. I'll just be here making videos on it whenever it comes out. Maybe next time I'll get a Raycon Shadow Legends deal out of it. <laughs> and on that note, I'll see you guys later.